Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for another Cook with OC program today. Before we begin today's webinar, Osteoporosis Canada acknowledges the land that our offices located in Toronto are on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. My name is Tracy Napoli, Director of Fund Development and Marcom at Osteoporosis Canada, and I will be your host for today. We would like to thank thinkbeef.ca for their partnership with this cooking demo. This cooking demo will provide general information about cooking and food knowledge. It is not intended as individualized health or nutrition advice. If you have questions about nutrition, consult a physician or registered dietitian. Now, during the webinar, if you have a question or comment, you can click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen and enter it there. We will do our best to answer as many questions as we can during the webinar within the time available. Nutrition is a key component for strengthening, strengthening and maintaining healthy bones, as well as in the prevention and management of osteoporosis. And we are working to provide strategies, new ideas, and develop recipes to help you get the bone building nutrients needed for bone health. Osteoporosis Canada recommends that whenever possible to get calcium and protein through food sources. Now, including protein in your diet at every meal benefits muscle and bone health. Some examples are beef, eggs, fish, poultry, pork, tofu, legumes, nuts, milk, yogurt, and cheese. And beef has many essential nutrients packed into each small serving and provides nutrients that are difficult to get from other foods like iron, zinc, and vitamin B12. Now milk products, including cheese, are a key source of essential nutrients like calcium that is more readily absorbed by the body as well as protein plus magnesium, zinc, vitamin A, vitamin D, and potassium. There are strategies for those much needed bone building nutrients. And we are always trying to help provide these strategies because you have told us oftentimes in the surveys that follow these webinars that not everyone wants to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. You may not be uh, someone who really enjoys cooking. So there are a few strategies that you can do. You can plan ahead, choose versatile ingredients so you don't have to buy as many, Keep pantry staples on hand like dried or canned beans, tin salmon, and nut butters. You can pick one day during the week, perhaps, to do some food prep so meals can come together in minutes. And the last one, we are big fans of freezing whatever you make in portions so that you can just pull it out whenever you would like. So as we start today, we are talking about doing a little advanced planning and cooking the base recipe for two of today's featured recipes is the Big Batch Calcium Boosted Beef. On the uh, Osteoporosis Canada website, there are four recipes that use this base recipe. And today we are featuring two, the Beef Ramen Noodle Soup, which has 34 grams of protein and 225 milligrams of calcium, and Turkish style pizza with 37 grams of protein and 350 milligrams of calcium per serving. Now you can get these and all of our recipes by visiting the website at osteoporosis.ca forward slash recipes. And I will also provide the links in the chat. It is now my pleasure to welcome Emily Richards, a professional home economist, freelance food writer, chef, and she is the author and co-author of 10 cookbooks. Emily also writes and develops recipes for print and online publications, that include everyday cooking and healthy eating, and she can be found on TV, uh, TV, radio, and webcasts just like this one. Please welcome Emily. Thank you, Tracy. Hey, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. It's been a while since I feel like I've cooked in my own kitchen, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I've been out and about, um, and it's kind of a nice change. But I'm so happy to um, be here with Tracy, Osteoporosis Canada, and everybody that's joining from across the country today. 
So we are going to get started and I'm going to talk a little bit about this um, big batch calcium boosted beef um, and fill you in on these. We're doing two recipes. We've never done two recipes um, in a webinar. So that's just how easy um, this is. And we will have meals in minutes, although you have to hear me talking through it. And Tracy too, right? You're going to Say we like to chat, to cooking and chatting. <laughs> it's all good. We've got lots of information to share. But yes, yeah, we're really excited about this. So we're going to, and some of those things you listed off, Tracy, this kind of recipe fits the bill for many of them. Freezing, make ahead, plan ahead. It, it kind of covers all the gamut. And these are really fun recipes. So um, kind of, you know, a little bit outside of the box, maybe a, a new spin in your wheelhouse. Um, but you can make them for larger quantities, smaller quantities. So we're going to talk all about that um, as we go through them. Is there anything else you wanted to mention off the top, Tracy, before I go full as I tilt? Reach over, yes, as I reach over. So as we always do, um, we're going to do a giveaway for uh, an osteoporosis unbreakable apron. And if you're on at the end of the webinar, of course you'll be, uh, we'll, I'll draw a name and we will send you the apron. Um, the other thing is, is that the base recipe, the big, bat, the big batch calcium boosted beef, that is a mouthful. Um, the video on how to make that, it's very simple, is on the website on the recipe page. Um, Emily has already prepared it, and we're just going to show you how quick it is once you pull it out of your freezer, defrost it, how to get these two uh, recipes on the table in minutes. So let's get cooking, Emily. Perfect. What are we making first? Uh we are going to make the Turkish style pizza. So this is basically um, pizza with a twist. Uh, we're using some items that I actually keep on hand in the freezer. Uh, non bread is something that I always have in the freezer. It's a great meal addition. It's a great pizza base. Um, and you can do so many fun things with it, like topping it with this beef topping that we're doing. And so that's what we're going to start off with. And this one comes together really, really quickly. But I'm going to tell you about this lovely little package. This is our big batch calcium boosted beef. So I think this is fabulous because it makes four different dinners just from the big batch. And if you're wondering why the long title, well, we had to tell you that it was calcium boosted. Um, so I'll give you the gist of it. Onions, garlic, sauteed with some ground beef. And what's great about that is that you get all the flavor packed in right from the beginning. Where do we get that calcium boost? Easily from a little bit of milk and cheese. And that goes right into the beef mixture. So if you think, well, if I've already added milk and cheese, I'm gonna have to make something based on that. Well, guess what? You don't have to. And today we're gonna prove that because that richness, that calcium boost that we've given it adds a lot of creaminess to the dishes that we're going to prepare. So all you have to do is make the big batch beef and then you're gonna divide it into four, put it in. I use resealable bags, squeeze the air out, and I kind of just fold them over like this, tuck it in the freezer, and you're good to go. For the recipes, you wanna take it out overnight. Hopefully you remember. If not, you can take it out in the morning and then just kind of move it around um, so that it becomes a little bit loose. And this is how easy it is to use. So each one of these portions serves about four, um, which is perfect for these dishes. Now, if you're thinking, well, I'm only a household of one or two, then you're gonna have more big batch calcium boosted beef to portion out so that you can use it in smaller amounts. And we're giving you a couple of ideas here today and we, we actually do have four recipes with it, but once you see how easy it is to work and cook with, you're gonna come up with your own ideas. And I think that's the great part about this planning ahead and having things in the freezer. You can pull it out and make many different things. So hopefully it'll be an inspiration. And if you do come up with inspiration as we're working through this, put it in the chat and let us know because that will just spark up more conversation and ideas for everyone else at home, okay? So I'm gonna start off just in my skillet. I have a little bit of just a neutral oil is what we're gonna start off with. And you'll notice that I didn't mention any seasonings in the beef because we're going to be adding seasonings to the recipes as we use them. I do have my recipes in front of me. They are easy, but I don't want to forget anything. This one only has about six ingredients, so it's, it's perfect. So we're going to start off with some frozen peas. I love having frozen vegetables in the freezer. These have just been sitting out for a bit, so they're not really thawed. They still have that frozen kind of coating to them, that little bit of frost. Um, 
and I'm going to just get them going essentially, okay? I'm gonna just warm them up so that we can get cooking. And I wanna keep the color of the peas. Peas have that nice, bright, vibrant green color, um, which I think is always so appetizing, okay? Now, if you don't have frozen peas, what other frozen vegetables do you have? You might have some corn, you might have some mixed vegetables, you might even have some leftover vegetables in the refrigerator that you wanna use up. This is a perfect opportunity to use leftovers. So we're kind of planning ahead, making this part of the meal, but really, if you start to realize that you have bits and pieces in your fridge and freezer that you wanna get rid of, this type of recipe works really, really well because we're just kind of heating everything through because essentially it's cooked. So while I'm heating this up, I've already turned on my oven. Because it is a pizza, we are going to be putting it in the oven. So I have my oven at 400 degrees, and I also have two baking sheets, okay? Why two? You don't have to use two. You can do it in batches if you want. But believe it or not, I can't fit all the naan on one, unless you have one of those really big baking sheets. I don't have one of those. Um, you can put all of them on one baking sheet. So that's why I have two baking sheets. So I have a package of five non it's pretty standard they're pretty standard size okay just like that if you were looking for non and you couldn't find any and all you found was pita bread would work really really well you could also use you could actually also use tortilla um, if you wanted to they might be a little bit larger some of them but it would work really nicely so i'm going to bring my baking sheets here and those peas are cooking perfectly. So see, I can get three on one, and I'm gonna put the other two on my second baking sheet. All right, so that part's good to go. So let's get the beef going. As I said, everything is cooked in here, and all I have to do is, now for those of you that don't um, have zip, zip lock or refillable bags, you could just use airtight containers, um, freezer containers, um, the same way. I like using something that I can make flat. It just saves space in my freezer because I'm sure all of you are very good at keeping your freezers neat and tidy, but I have a lot of stuff in my freezer. So in goes my calcium boosted beef mixture. And here's where our seasoning comes in. We're going to add two teaspoons of ground cumin. Okay. So this is really gonna spark up the flavor. This is one that kind of what gives it that little bit of a, a Turkish feel. If you wanted to change this up, you could do um, a spice mix, something spicy, like a, a spicy chili powder with a little bit of cayenne in here. You could do something a bit more mild, like a curry powder. Um, you can even just do an herb mixture, a dried herb mixture, like an Italian fusion mix, and put that in here. So you can really change this up. This is really kind of, to get your you know, idea light bulb. Turn the light bulb on, that's what it is, to get kind of your, your brain enjoying the ease of cooking, okay? So as I'm stirring here, I'm hoping that you can kind of see that this is a nice kind of creamy mixture. And all that is, is the milk and cheese that I put into that calcium boosted beef, but kind of just remelting again. So it creates that nice creaminess. But if you notice, it's also keeping our mixture together, okay? So I don't really need to add anything um, to hold it together because we already have um, that in the, in the calcium boosted beef. So basically all I'm doing here is reheating, that's all. But you don't even have to heat it fully because it's gonna go into the oven. Okay. So I'm just turning off the heat because this really only takes a few minutes. And I really wish I'm going to do this, but it's not that you can smell it from where you are. It smells amazing. That little bit of cumin just really, really brightens up um, the flavor. And when you think of beef, you, you think of all the spices that goes with beef, which is pretty much anything and everything. So that's really where the base of this recipe can kind of jump into so many different cultures. And by cultures, when I say that, I mean just all the spices. So if you have you know, a cupboard full of spices that you haven't used, this might inspire you to kind of mix and match and use those different spices. So what I'm gonna do is add 
a little bit more mozzarella. So I'm actually gonna stir that in because that's gonna add a little bit more creaminess to it. And you wanna do that with the heat off because it doesn't need to, um, really all we're doing is melting the cheese in there. So that helps make it a little bit creamier. That's also giving us a little bit more calcium, which we love, okay? And I'm just going to stir that around. And it doesn't have to melt fully. Okay? You can see how nice and gooey that stringy cheese is. Mozzarella does have that ability to be nice and gooey. And then what we're gonna do is take our beef mixture and just divide it amongst our five non breads. Now, if you're wondering, oh, Emily, there's no sauce on it. Is it gonna be dry? Can I put sauce on it? This is really all about you and what you love. This is a great recipe on its own. The beef has a nice creaminess to it. Oh, I forgot I have two more over here. I've got to fill these guys up. And you can really, if you wanted to make this, if you're worried that, let's say you're making this for your kids and you think, oh, I don't know if they really like cumin. Well, you could just put some pizza sauce on the bottom and make it a little bit more of a traditional style pizza. That would be absolutely fabulous. You could have the mixture ready to go. And let's say you have hungry teenagers showing up after school. The beef's in the fridge, get them to put it together and make a meal. This is really meals and minutes. I'm not, I'm not like deceiving you in any way. What I'm doing is, is what it is. So I'm just gonna spread out our beef mixture here. Oops, that one doesn't wanna stay on, okay. And you can see even with that little addition of the mozzarella, it still has that nice gooey consistency. And that's really where the moisture comes in. I'm gonna bring over my other two here so you can see all five of them, okay. And I have made this with the frozen mixed vegetables too, like the corn, pea, and bean mix, and I love it. It's a little bit more colorful. This one has great color with the, the peas, okay? So there's our mixture all spread over. And then we want just a little bite of something salty. And I'm gonna use feta cheese for that. Now you could use other cheese. You don't even have to put cheese on it. You could just put this in the oven and it's delicious. Um, as is, but I'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit more of, or sprinkle the feta on top. But you could sprinkle more mozzarella if you are not a feta lover. Um, you could definitely just put a little bit more mozzarella or don't stir the mozzarella in. You could just stir the, sprinkle the mozzarella on right on top, okay? So this is just, um, this is just a cow's milk feta that has a nice little, if you taste it first, I always recommend tasting feta first so that you know how salty it is. If it has a little bit of a extra briny, um, salty flavor, I just usually give it a little rinse and then um, it's ready to crumble and enjoy, okay? Just like that. Now, if you wanted to, if you had some fresh dill or fresh basil, parsley, if it's gonna be frost in your area soon, you might wanna get into the garden and get some of those herbs. And you could put that right on top or stir it into your beef mixture because that would make a lovely addition, any of those fresh herbs. If you wanted to do something a little bit more simple, um, even just some chopped parsley, um, and that would add some really nice color to it, okay? So that's it, these are gonna go into the oven, okay? So for about 10 to 15 minutes, I think, um, it's really up to your oven. Um, if you're putting both in the oven at the same time, put them on two different racks. I'm gonna just put the timer on so I don't forget about them. Put them on two different racks, kind of bottom and top, and then switch them halfway, just so that they um, bake nice and evenly. So you'll get that nice kind of crisp crust on the bottom, which is definitely what we want. And it will just have a nice light golden color on top, okay? So there's one recipe done. In the oven, we're gonna forget about it. And we're gonna go on to our second recipe. Okay. Can I Does anyone have Emily? any questions? Yes. Yeah, of course. I I'm like, say, I, we have so many questions coming in. We have so many. It was, okay. it was, it was so fast that I just kind of blew right through. I know, it. and it, and we didn't lie. It is minutes. It was, it wasn't just a, it wasn't just something that we thought we were going to say. Okay, so these are some, and and I'm just looking at the chat and I'm looking at the questions, and Joanne and I are on the same wavelength because I was actually going to say 
the mixture that you just made, I use a variation of that to stuff peppers. And so Joanne's saying, hey, can I stuff peppers or stuff squash? You could stuff tomatoes, you could stuff zucchini, you could stuff butternut squash, you could stuff, I mean, it's a great, but you could stuff pasta. It's a great filling, right, Emily, for everything. Yep. So yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm nodding the whole time. It's like yes. check marks for everything. Exactly. And that's really, that's kind of what we want is for you to see that having something like this in the fridge and really overall to make this big batch calcium boosted beef, it might take you about 10 to 15 minutes to complete. Um, you chill it, separate it into the, into the freezer and you forget about it. And then it's like, surprise, you have meals and minutes during the week. And it inspires you to make these other things. This on its own, you mentioned stuffed pasta. If you yeah. added a jar of canned tomatoes or your favorite tomato sauce, you have a really hearty meat sauce. You can make lasagna with, don't want to make lasagna? Just cook up pasta and enjoy it. And you benefit because it has that calcium boost in it. It really adds creaminess. And I know that you can't taste it today, um, but I cannot stress enough how creamy the dishes are based on that milk and cheese that we add in with the beef. It's just that combination with the beef is fabulous. It has a lovely texture in your mouth and it's very, very creamy. Exactly. Now I'm, I'm going to do more specific to this recipe. There's some general questions, but I'm going to save them uh, for the next one. Cause I think they're more applicable to the next one. So um Oh, somebody just said, can we use it as a chili dish and then add tomatoes and kidney beans? I mean, 100%. See, all the ideas are starting to happen. This, the, the purpose of this is literally just a bit of prep, throw it in, and then you can kind of make it your own. Um, we've got Vicki who asked if you can add spinach to the beef mixture. Yes. Yes, 100%. And if you wanted to, um, if you had some kind of wilty looking um, baby spinach lurking that you forgot about, or maybe even some spring mix that you just want to kind of, you can cook it right in with the beef and then freeze it. So yeah. sometimes we think salad greens are just salad greens. They're not, you can use any greens. You could use kale, you could use Swiss chard. Um, we're using bok choy in the recipe. Totally. You could use that and cook it in with the beef. So that, and the reason why you want to do that is to take out the water so that when you freeze it and use it, it's not adding water to the recipes, but you've not only added, like you already have the calcium boost there. Now you're adding fiber. You have some more veggies in there. So it really is limitless and what you can do with this mixture. So I feel like I'm a little bit of an infomercial for this mixture, <laughs> but you can't buy the mixture. You have to make the mixture. You have to make home. it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So two quick things before we start making this yummy soup, this quick soup. So the, the uh, one of the, the points was about uh, gluten-free specifically for this. So I'm sure there's gluten-free uh, different breads you could use if you wanted to, but the stuffing of the vegetables then would be a great way to use this and make this a gluten-free meal. So I mean, hundred, a hundred percent. Yep. Um, so any vegetables, um, the base, the, the base recipe that we're using of the big batch calcium boosted beef is gluten-free. So you can go ahead and use it um, to your heart's content in any gluten-free option. So there's a wide variety of gluten-free breads, flatbreads, pizza bases now, um, thick cauliflower crust, for example, not all of them are gluten-free, yep. you do have to check, but you could also make your own base of a cauliflower crust, super easy, just cauliflower and cheese. That's the one I do all the time. And there you go. Um, and then you put the beef on top and so you could do the exact same thing. So there are lots of options. Um, I know sometimes we kind of get in ruts, especially when we're looking at specific um, allergens or specific dietary needs. So if you kind of see the base as limitless, then incorporate what you do in your daily life, um, it becomes an even better mix. Exactly. And the last thing just before we start is a lot of people are asking about substitutions. We're going to talk about some of the next recipe, but know that when you make a change, depending on what that change is, you could impact the amount of calcium and protein that you're, you're getting in the recipe. So 100%. mindful yes. with whatever, including the vegetables, like anything you add, you can bulk it up, but you want to be careful, um, uh, you know, about what kind of substitutions you're making. Cause the goal really is, is to get that, those bone building nutrients. So that's it for me. Let's make some <laughs> beef ramen noodle soup. <laughs> So um, if any of you have 
kids in your life of any age and even adults because ramen just kind of rolls off your tongue. It's a quick meal. You might have some of these packages. You might have bowls um, in your cupboards lurking and you think, oh, we got to stay away from those. You kind of do have to stay away from them, but we're using them in a, in a way that we're just simply using the noodles. And for the, the price point of them, um, these, these were on sale this week for 29 cents. You need two packages. So already the, you know, the idea of um, meals and minutes is great, but then when you can reduce your grocery costs too, it's even better. So these are fabulous um, to kind of have on hand for these simple things. Um, we are not using the seasoning packet in um, the, the ramen packages. So that we're gonna discard because we are using, um, and this is something that um, is fairly new on the grocery market. You'll find it in the soup aisle um, with other broths. And it's a pho based broth. So what that means is that it has, it's a beef broth that is enhanced with spices that you would find in a pho soup, which is a Vietnamese uh, noodle and typically beef soup. Okay. It has lots of great flavor. Now, if you're thinking, you know, that's going to have too much sodium for me. I don't, I'm not, it's not available in my grocery store. We got you covered. Don't worry. What you're going to use is a beef broth, and you can use a homemade beef broth, you could use a sodium reduced beef broth, a no salt added beef broth, whatever you're comfortable with, and add the seasoning to it. And by seasoning, if you have a Chinese five spice powder, you can add just about a half a teaspoon will do you. Some fresh ginger would be really lovely in there. And if you happen to have some hoisin sauce, you could add a little bit to that. But it's really, really just amping up the flavor of broth. Now, if you're looking at me and thinking, Emily, that's too much work already. I'm not doing it, just use beef broth because this is a great soup filled with the creaminess of the big batch calcium boosted beef and all the veggies that we're gonna add to it, okay? So if you, I don't remember the exact numbers, Tracy will say them if I ask her to, um, but the amount of protein and calcium in this is astounding and you think, but this is a beef noodle soup, how does it happen? It happens because of the, the big, the boosted beef that we have, and then the veggies that we're adding as well, okay? So if you're thinking, Emily, you said that there was milk and cheese in the calcium boosted beef. This is weird because it's going into a soup. It's not weird. It is not weird. Trust me on this one. I love this soup. My kids love this soup. Not all the kids because some of them don't like things mixing still, but that's fine. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. So very simply, soup pot. And this is the pho broth that we're using. I'm using the whole, um, the whole container. And I'm just gonna squeeze that out. And we are gonna enhance the flavor a little bit, okay? And by enhancing, what I'm gonna do is add some soy sauce or tamari. So this is where um, we mentioned gluten-free for the last recipe. If you are um, looking for gluten-free products, you do have to read labels. So the broth, definitely you have to be aware of if there's um, a wheat um, product in it. And same with soy. Tamari, look for the gluten-free tamari. Typically, um, it doesn't have any wheat in it. So that will help kind of move things along. And you can use a wheat-free noodle. Okay? You could also use a tofu noodle um, if you wanted to kind of change things up. So again, you know, get the idea going and spinning so that this will suit you and your family. So I'm just going to add a little bit of soy sauce that really deepens the color and also the flavor. Soy sauce has a natural affinity with beef. Um, I use it often in marinades. So the flavor combination with our ground beef mixture and the soup, the broth is perfect. So again, I have my recipe right here because I don't want to forget anything. So we want to bring this to a simmer. And while that's happening, we're going to open up our noodles. And this shouldn't be difficult, but of course it probably will be for me. Yep, I knew it. I'm gonna just get, oh, and then our pizzas are ready. So I'm going to just open up these packets and take out, and if they're all crushed up, don't worry about it. These ones happen to still be in one solid piece. They're still gonna be noodles, whether they're crushed up or not. So I'm gonna open these and I'm gonna grab the pizzas out of the oven. There we go. See, this is so aside. easy. You can make both these recipes at the same time. And, uh, and Emily, I just, I have to say, I'm also someone who doesn't like to mix a lot. So it's not just your kids. <laughs> oh, <laughs> how did I know Emily that? Emily likes somehow? to laugh at how I like to cook and stuff like that. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put this out in front just to tease you here. 
um, cause it is hot and out of the oven. There we go. We don't want that. All right. So those will cool down a bit before we dig into them. But if you think about it, this is, these are two great meals that, um, come together quickly that if you wanted to have them both and kind of carry over for lunches, um, or after school snacks, it's, ab it's absolutely perfect. Okay. So I have my noodles here and this is on. Yes, it is. I just wanted to make sure that my broth was on. So we're going to um, add our, I can actually slip these in now because all we're going to do is soften these noodles. So if anybody out there has ever made ramen noodles, you know that they only take a couple of minutes. Um, so we just want to soften them in the broth because then we're actually going to take them out of the broth so that we have enough space in our soup pot to add all the other ingredients. Okay. I have some tongs here just to kind of help me out a little bit because I like to move them around. Okay. There we are. And then I'm going to get our veggies ready. So this has the combination of the big batch calcium boosted beef, as well as lots of veggies. So this is colorful. It has wonderful texture. And if you've ever had a nice big bowl of ramen soup, this kind of replicates that, but it, it's just healthier. It just has that wonderful um, filling um, deliciousness that ramen soup has. So I'm gonna tell you about the veggies that we're using. We are using some sliced red pepper. Don't have red pepper, use whatever pepper you have. If you don't have any pepper, don't worry about it. Um, it does add a really great color contrast to the other two veggies that we're adding, which are green. Um, one is this beautiful baby bok choy. Okay, so we're gonna actually chop this up. Um, and I like to chop it kind of coarsely. Um, for, if, for those of you that don't use bok choy, whether it's baby bok choy or the full-size bok choy, um, often what I like to do is when I get it home, I trim the bottoms and I cut them in half lengthwise and I soak them in cold water and just kind of rub down at the stalks to get them nice and clean. Um, you can let them just sit in, a, in a, some cool water in the sink or in a bowl and then just kind of shake them out and, um, and continue to use them. So it's a nice little thing. It also crisps, crisps them up a little bit. So if they look like they're a little bit wilted, um, this is fabulous just to kind of, kind of revive them a little bit, okay? So we're going to coarsely chop our bok choy. And I like nice big pieces so that um, if you want to eat this with um, some chopsticks, you can. Um, or if you want to do like a fork and a spoon, you totally can. I usually tend to leave the leaves a little bit larger because they wilt um, in a slightly different manner than the stalks. Okay. And if you couldn't find bok choy one day, you could use some Swiss chard would be really nice in here. Okay. Um, so you can kind of change it up in what you have. We talked about spinach in the, in the beef, but you could use some baby spinach in here. That would be really nice. If you want a bit more pepperiness, I love baby arugula and I like using it in different recipes. So that would work really well in here too. So for the bok choy, you need about a pound, which typically is about four baby bok choy. It can range depending on how big a, your large bok choy is from half to a full, um, a full size bok choy. Okay. So just so, as it, an idea if you don't have a scale, but um, I always love recommending scales. So anybody having a birthday come up, make sure you ask for a scale if you don't already have one. Okay, so there's my bok choy. So you can see there's a lot of bok choy here um, and it really, really balances out um, the color and flavor. I have some simmer happening in my pot. You can see my noodles are starting to separate here. So just give them a little pan. Now, if you're worried about how long the noodles are, you can break them up yourself um, before putting them in. I just think it's fun. I love slurping noodles. Um, so I think it's fun um, if it bothers you. Because <laughs> I know some people don't like hearing that slurping noise at the table. Make sure you break them up and then that won't happen, okay? So in a couple of minutes, you can see our noodles um, are separate. And I'm going to take out four bowls, okay, because I'm going to divide them amongst the four bowls. Now, do you have to do them in four bowls right away? You don't have to. 
Um, you could take all the noodles out and then divide it later, but I'm just going to do it so that everything's portioned out. And I'm hoping that I'll have hungry kids that come home from school and eat it up. So I'm going to just take my noodles and I'm using tongs because I find it's the easiest to use. And I'm just going to put it about a quarter of the noodles in each bowl as the base. Now, don't worry if you feel like, oh, I think one has more, one has too, too little, or if you leave some of the noodles in the broth, it's okay. We need most of the noodles out of there so that it has the space to cook everything else. Okay. Well, let me just grab these few more noodles. We'll leave the rest in here because I don't want to fight with them. But if you have a little strainer, that always helps to get those noodles out. There we go. I always, um, this, I love these noodles because I would always tell the kids that if they ate these noodles, their hair would be curly because they're curly like the noodles. None of my kids have curly hair. <laughs> so I lied to them. It was a little lie. <laughs> All right, so we have um, our pot simmering. So guess what we get to do? Add everything else. There's that portion of beef mixture that we're going to add in, just like that. And we're going to add our bok choy in there as well. Oh, I forgot to cut one. <laughs> that one will be a really big portion if I don't cut it. We'll cut that one and get it in there too. And then we're also gonna add that red pepper. And our last vegetable that I didn't mention, which is available in the freezer section. I always keep a bag in my freezer and that is edamame, okay? Um, soybeans. This is what they look like in the shell. So if you can't find them shelled, this is shelled, this is not shelled. If you can't find them shelled, you will have to shell your own. You need about a cup. Now, if you're thinking, I don't like edamame, um, I can't find edamame. There's lots of vegetables. If you're thinking lima beans, you're thinking a good choice because they're very similar in size. Um, you could use lima beans. You could even use more frozen peas. You bought them to make the pizza, so you could use peas in here too. So it's really, again, based on what you have um, in the freezer and accessible to you. So we are basically going to stir this and let the veggies get kind of soft, but not fully soft. We want them to still have a bite to them. Um, I always refer to it as tender crisp, so that they're tender to bite through, um, but they still have that nice crispness to them so that you know that they're a nice, fresh veggie. So I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna kind of pull this away from the sides, but if you take a look at my broth, do you see how creamy that color? That's the creaminess coming from our big batch calcium boosted beef, okay? So it just creates a really nice texture to this broth. Something different, something that you wouldn't typically find in a ramen soup. So we've kind of created our own little niche of a soup, if you will, um, that has that healthy twist to it, okay? Now, could you use other veggies? We talked about lots of other veggie options here, but really, again, if you have frozen veggies that you wanna use up from the freezer, you can put them in there. Um, a broccoli, cauliflower, and carrot mix would work in here, slightly bigger chunks. That would totally work. If you had leftover roasted veggies, put them in here. Roasted peppers, some onions, zucchini, they would be fabulous in here, okay? If you had fresh zucchini, I know I still have lots from the garden, you could slice it up and put it in here um, at the same time with all the other veggies and just kind of soften it to cook it through. So you really, really have the benefit of taking, again, the simple idea, um, the plan ahead of making that big batch calcium boosted beef and creating another meal in minutes. Now, the ramen really speeds this up because the noodles only take a couple of minutes. But if you had, let's say you boiled spaghetti and you had leftover spaghetti, you could use that if you didn't add, even if there was sauce on it, tomato sauce, that would just add another flavor component here. Um, so you can really, if you had rice, you could do this as a rice bowl of, of soup. So you could put rice on the bottom and pour it over rice. So you really have kind of endless options of how this soup plays out for you, okay? So this is just gonna take like another minute, but I can already see that 
the top part of the bok choy is nicely wilted. It still has that beautiful bright green color to it. Okay, and then we're just gonna ladle it over our noodles. What do you think, Tracy? I don't think I've ever done two recipes on a webinar, have I? I don't, I really don't you, think I have. You've actually done three, but I didn't wanna say anything. <laughs> Wait, how did I do three? Oh, well, we well did, technically we did the snacks and stuff, but th those weren't meals. Those, those were snacks and stuff, but um, okay, that's true. Yes. And then we thought <laughs> three was enough because it was too much to try to get it all in. Uh, so we went back to two. Um, so I'm going to, so while you're doing that, let me just kind of chat about a couple of things. So um, I love bok choy, but one of the reasons I love bok choy, uh, so think about it before you switch it out, is that half a cup of cooked bok choy has 84 milligrams of calcium. So that's one of your calcium components. So it's like building, right? A lot of people will say, well, you know, these fruits don't have that much calcium, but when you put them all together, so you've got the milk, you've got the mozzarella in the big, uh, oh, the big batch calcium boosted beef. Uh, you've got some of the other um, components as well that we're putting into the recipe. So if you are gonna switch out the bok choy, Broccoli, which has calcium as well, may not have the same amount, but that may be a good, um, a good substitution. At the end of the day, if you're managing your intake, it's not through one meal. One meal isn't going to make or break how much you're getting. It's like, you know, it's kind of how you choose, you make choices from morning till night, including all the, you know, if you're going to have, uh, you know, depending on your snack and how you're going to, you know, have that as well. So just try to make sure that you're getting whatever you need throughout the day. Um, and I'll show you the link at the end of the webinar to help you calculate your calcium, especially. Um, but, oh, look at it. It looks all good. Let's look at what Emily made. What did she, let's look at that bowl. That looks yummy. And if you like it spicy. Yes. If you like it spicy, sriracha is the way to go, Tabasco sauce. Um, I have some green onions here too, if you want a little sprinkle of onion. These are all like extra things, right? If you don't have them in the fridge, you don't have to go buy them. If you had chives still lurking in your garden, sprinkled chives would be really nice on here. Um, it really, it's again, not totally necessary. It's just kind of gilding the lily. If you had a little bit of fresh herbs, it would be lovely on here. Um, I really like, this may sound weird to some, but I really like pickled ginger on these types of things because I really like that sharp flavor. So, you know, a little bit of pickled ginger on here would be lovely. Um, you could spice it up with some wasabi, even if you had some in the fridge. So it, it really does kind of play off that little bit of saltiness. We have some creaminess and we have all that freshness from the veggies in there that, um, you know, that little bit of heat works really nicely with. So it's a super, super quick meal. And it's, you know, it, it's a big step up from just cooking some ramen, right? Like we've added a whole component, um, actually a couple components, all the veggies, all our protein in there as well. And then we really boosted it with calcium. And if you looked at this dish, you wouldn't necessarily think, oh, wow, this is full of calcium, right? Because it's got veggies in there. It's got the beef in there. There's no cheese that's obvious to the eye. So it really is kind of a little bit of a surprise. So, you know, you're making it and surprise, there's lots of calcium in it. What is the amount again? This one has like a crazy amount, doesn't it? Oh, you're so, you're so great. I did put it in, wait, it's so, I had to check. So 225 milligrams of calcium in this recipe and 34 grams of protein. So yeah, I mean, so it, like it is, that's, that's nothing to balk at. That's like no, really good. No. So if you had this for lunch, this would be a great lunch. It'd be a great dinner. Um, what, what else would I have this with dinner? I'd probably just have a salad to be honest with you or some bread because I'm a carb lover like that. Um, but I mean, it is actually quite satisfying because you're not, you're not thinking about how full like you'll get from all these things. Like I know bok choy for me is something I love adding to stir fries and soups and things like that. And I find it quite filling as a, as a veggie. So, um, and it ha happens to be a great um, calcium boost for us too, which is nice. So I wanted to talk, so there were some questions with the first recipe, um, but I thought I would okay. leave it because I think it's more appropriate, uh, it, more applicable here. So a lot of people were asking, could they in the big batch calcium boosted beef change out the uh, cheese for like Gouda or cheddar? So a couple of things on, on that. If you're looking at your sodium, 
right, Emily? Not all cheeses have the same amount of sodium, but also you, you may change the flavor profile. It's put it this way. If you're fine with it, it's fine, but just be aware. And you may not need as much cheese as what I'm thinking. So yes to all of those things. And um, just to kind of broaden that answer, um, if you were to use something like cheddar, it's very, it's, it's got a saltier bite to it, um, depending on the cheddar you're using. Um, if you're using orange cheddar, it will change the color um, because this is a little bit more muted because of the mozzarella that we're using. Um, but if you already have been inspired by how you're going to use this big batch calcium boosted beef, and you know that the cheddar will work, 100% use the cheddar. Um, the reason why I went with mozzarella is because the, of the flavor profiles across the four recipes, mozzarella really worked. The other one that would work is provolone. They're mild cheeses. A mild Gouda would work as well because it doesn't have like a big, bold flavor. So when you add it to things like an Asian influenced soup that has that little bit of soy, um, the spices and the pho broth, those types of things jump out because the cheese doesn't take over. So some of those bigger flavored cheeses, like an, a cheddar, for example, might take over a little bit. But if you know you're going to be stuffing peppers, if you're going to make a sauce. Um, if you're using it as a pizza base, cheddar would totally work. And so would Gouda. Um, would I use something potent like blue cheese? Probably not, um, unless I'm making, you know, a great big bold um, pizza. And then I'm going to add some pears to it and really kind of play up those flavors to match up. But what makes this really, really kind of user friendly is the fact that we did use a mild cheese. The added bonus is that it's nice and stringy. It does have that nice goo effect um, that mozzarella offers. And Gouda would kind of give you a little bit of that as well. Cheddar, not so much, um, depending on if it's a, a young cheddar. Havarti would be a great one um, to substitute as well, just because of its mild flavor. So hopefully that helps in the um, cheese substitute. And I, I have a feeling that some people might be thinking, I have cheese in my drawer that I need to get rid of. <laughs> hmm, I wonder who that is. That was an earlier discussion today. Your expiry date, people. Um, there is one other question. So again, we, we always try to give options for variations and substitutions. Sometimes it may work, sometimes it may not. But one uh, question was, if you wanted to use a non-dairy um, option. There are fortified non-dairy beverages with calcium and protein, actually. Yes. Uh, the, and what, what I would yeah. recommend is the, because I've, I've tried many of them, mm -hmm. uh, one that works really well that adds a great creaminess. And this is for our, um, our, our, our dairy-free nut users, because it's not going to, if you have a nut allergy, you can't use it. But the almond cashew beverage it's really, really creamy and it works really well in this combination. Um, your other option is a soy beverage, but you do have to make sure, and most of them will tell you the, the calcium content in it. So that is really where um, you, want, you want to check your labels and make sure of that. Um, we always get asked about, you know, kind of how this stayed together. Guess what? Wheat tends to keep things together. So the reason why the milk and the cheese stay together is because there's two tablespoons, I think there's two tablespoons in our big batch boosted beef. Now, the reason why I said it can be gluten-free is because there is an option to use cornstarch. So before someone reads the recipe and then messages us and says, you said it was gluten-free, there is a gluten-free option there. So it's just, you have to cook it a little bit differently because cornstarch needs to happen at the end. Um, but again, remember that the texture's a little bit different. Wheat is much stronger uh, as a binder than cornstarch in a case where then you're going to cook it again. Cornstarch kind of can fall apart a little bit. So we really tried to cover everybody's um, needs in the sense of um, gluten allergies, dairy allergies, and things like that. But really, we can't, you know, I have to reiterate what Tracy said, just doing those straight substitutes without knowing, you know, the calcium benefits and the protein benefits um, you do end up missing out on some nutrients there. Exactly. So I think that's it for questions. We've done, wow, two recipes and we're not even at the hour yet. So what, <laughs> let's look at, let's, sure. can you show us actually close up of the, the pizza yeah. and the Turkish style pizza and the ramen? It's cooled down a bit now so that I can actually hold it up. 
So I usually, what I do is I usually just cut it in half and eat it like pizza. Um, it's a little bit easier than just kind of putting the whole round in your mouth. Um, you could also add hot sauce to this too, if you wanted. Um, I know a lot of people love spicy um, foods. You could add hot pepper flakes to the beef mixture. And then if not, it's not hot enough still. Um, my dad was a big hot pepper lover and put them on everything. So you could definitely do that for both dishes. Um, and if you take a look at our ramen bowl again, you'll see that, see, there's not a ton of broth here, which is what makes it a really hearty meal. It's, excuse me, really about the beef, the veggies, and that little bit of noodles. Um, and the broth is like the vehicle to kind of slurp up at the end and say, oh, we had a beautiful bowl of soup. But this really is a, you know, a soup that eats like a meal. That's exactly what this is. Careful, trademark, <laughs> careful. <laughs> So that's, listen, this is great. This is now I will say we have, there are two other recipes on the website um, that actually use a big uh, batch calcium booster beef, but we are also going to be doing that webinar in the new year. So if you can find the recipe now, um, we'll be sending out the recipes after, but before we just wrap up, we're going to do something a little different. Um, uh, we'll announce the apron winner shortly, but um, this is a little something. Uh, let me see here. So in September of this year, Osteoporosis Canada held its annual general meeting. And at this meeting, awards were presented to volunteers and partners um, that help with our work and help support people uh, in managing their osteoporosis and in promoting bone health. And this year, you can't see this, because so, or maybe you can't, the award for our community partner award is Emily Richards. And so <laughs> Emily wasn't able to make it that day, but, uh, and I know you can't see it, but basically this is the 2022 Community Partner Award. Emily has worked with us since 2016. Uh, when COVID hit, I called her, I'm like, what are we gonna do? So we figured <laughs> out how to put all this programming online. And honestly, it has been one of the best things that we've done. We've created our own little Cook With OC community. And we, I know the repeat people and I see all the new people. And we're getting them from all different channels. And we're so excited every time. Oh, we've got all people congratulating you on the chat. Um, and so, and Emily's helped us do a lot. She's helped connect us to other partners. She's always thinking about bone health and helping people with osteoporosis. We're always thinking about, you know, coming up with strategies and she's wonderful to work with. And we see your comments when you do the surveys. And I've even had just people email us and call the office. So please do the survey actually at the end of this webinar. Um, but I'm gonna shift this to you uh, so that you can show it off at home. But Emily, it's just been a pleasure to work with you. And thank you so much because you make what we do uh, really accessible and uh, a joy to do that. So this is- Emily's Thank you, thank award. you so much. Tracy, she didn't I know had I was no idea. I didn't know Tracy was gonna do this, nor did I know that there was an actual award. Like yes. That was, I didn't think it was a thing. I mean, I was sad that I could make the meeting and then Tracy kind of gave me the heads up that I had the, this award, award, which totally blew my mind because I was not expecting it. Um, it's been fabulous working with Tracy, um, Arvin, who you don't see, um, and yes. many others um, at Osteoporosis Canada because um, it's, it's, it's been a great experience and I hope to continue. Uh, thank you to everybody who comes to the webinars and who does really send in um, what you guys want to see. All the partners that we work with yes, um, to bring in these delicious recipes is really, really wonderful because um, they give us um, the great products to use and the inspiration to kind of get things rolling. But in the end, it's you guys that are on these webinars because you have the questions, you have the wants and the desires. Um, and without those, this stuff can't happen. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming into my kitchen. I know one day we'll meet in person um, at, at some point. <laughs> some point um, we'll, so we'll in, do a road show across the country. We'll do, we'll do a road show. But if you are out in the community and I'm out in your community, please tell me that you've come to a webinar um, because I would love to actually see your face. I don't get to see your face um, during these webinars. Um, I see my face and Tracy's face, which are two lovely faces to see. <laughs> Um, so um, I'm honored. Thank you. And I hope when you guys make these recipes at home that you let us know. Um, 
send us what you're changing up to do um, with them, how you're making them your own. Um, if you have tips for us, I love getting tips from everybody who's cooking at home because I love sharing them with other people as well. So it's, it's all a community that um, we work together to get people to eat good food and stay healthy. Exactly. So, yes. Yeah, so I just thought that would be really nice just because so many of you said so many lovely things. So there are so many comments coming in and uh, all, all uh, oh, I even got a thank you. Oh, that was great. Thanks so much. So, and Arvin, Arvin's <laughs> in the background. He's helping everybody get online. So before we move on, let's give the apron away. And the apron, yes. the lovely apron, just like Emily wears, is um, the winner is Mary D from Burnaby, BC. So congratulations, Ooh, congrats. Mary Deeb. I hope I said your name correctly, Deeb. And uh, I'm going to email you and then we'll ship you the apron. And uh, I'm just going to have lost now of complete control. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now it's all. There we go. We're going to uh, do that. There we go. All right. So we have two more cooking demos coming up in 2022. We have Thai vegan curry, which is in our, our partnership with Silk um, and Danon. And that's coming up Wednesday, October 26th. It is currently on the Cook with OC webpage. So you can actually register today. And then we have a beef soup lofty uh, Instapot stew. Again, our partner, thinkbeef.ca. And you know, we're one of the suggestions people gave us a request was how do I do this using my Instapot or my uh, slow cooker? And we even have a way for you to do this if you don't even have one of those items. So definitely that's Tuesday, November 22nd. That is also up. You can register for both of these. And as of right now, these are the only two for 2022. We will be posting the other cooking demos and there will be a cook along actually in the new year. Um, so just keep checking. You can register osteoprocess.ca forward slash cook with OC. Um, also for more information, calculate your calcium. It's on the website. It's a great tool. Also on the website is a list of calcium rich foods that you can go through and find your, your calcium um, you know, per serving. The OC podcast, Unbreakable, we have lots of great content. We have new podcasts that will be released within the next four to six weeks. Uh, these are all under 20 minutes, really quick. You can stream it on your favorite podcast provider, or you can listen directly on the website. Know your risk. If you know someone who needs to get educated on bone health and osteoporosis, send them the quiz. And then lastly, this is recorded, just like all our other webinars. And you can watch it along with all other, uh, we posted one, we have one on diabetes and osteoporosis. Uh, one is posted on our social media today. It was a replay on uh, top five things to know about osteoporosis and medications. So visit the OC replay webpage. And of course, thank you to our partner, thinkbeef.ca, because without our partners, we wouldn't be able to do all of these great programs and engage all of you. And lastly, uh, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter because that way you get this in your inbox. You can register and get information on all the other programs that we do and uh, new updates about osteoporosis and bone health. So lastly, thank you all uh, because it's so much fun when we get to do this. And I hope that you've had as much fun as we have. Uh, stay well, connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and uh, have a great long weekend. We are thankful for you. Happy Thanksgiving and happy cooking. Take care, everyone. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks.